Hello, hello, hello everyone. This is Vivek. Am I clearly audible and okay? And am I visible everyone? Hi. Let me just quickly check one thing if something if everything is working fine on my end. Yeah, things are working fine. Chalo, I think we can then start with today's agenda. Chalo, now we are at a number which I was expecting more. Okay. And I think uh, going past, I think anybody who is on this stream most probably is going to be there to complete the whole series. So I'm going to assume that uh, everything is now set and we are all ready to learn in a deeper level, right? Clear, brother? Great. Okay. So how many of you have seen the video? For today, I mean to say. Quick plus one should be fine on the chat. Two people only? Three? Four? I mean, even if you have not seen it, understand it might be possible. Plus half. <laughs> one or two. Great. So what we're going to do today is actually uh, go through again a very very similar setup we'll do some mcq questions at the start uh, just to kind of uh, see if you guys remember the things that we have learned right and uh, just to kind of talk about how do we uh, like what have we learned actually uh, next then we will do uh, like questions that we have on the comments right so if you have any doubts on any of the videos anything feel free to add them to the comments i will take all of them from the comments right and in the chat obviously i will take at the end because in the chat I will, i'm just going to quickly discuss things and the comments is there oh yes i i, I have I, I know right like anybody who attended the last session knows that we i take questions from the comments so i'm gonna take the questions over here dp series is good please tell uh, yes, so uh, like you can watch any particular creators content guys. Everybody has their own content. You can watch any one of them. Okay. Okay. Let me quickly promote few people who I feel are actually active very, very regularly. So basically, uh, we need more mods in the chat. we're gonna take the quiz now okay let's start with the quiz Chalo, that's great uh let me maybe set up this once you can see my screen as well right no not yet and we have this now You do sessions regularly. We do try to keep things regularly. At least I will try to keep it now. Okay, let's then get started with okay. this. Let's start with MCQs, guys. Okay, let's let's do, go with that first. The first, let me kind of day two quiz over here. You can see the quiz, right? Everybody can see the quiz. Can we start with the quiz now? Quick yes on the chat. Also, if you guys have not yet liked the stream, I mean, I should not be saying this very repeatedly, but it definitely helps if you guys put a like a single like and a comment on the videos that you watch. It just helps me to kind of help, like make the content reach to more people. I mean. Uh, Ideally, like I feel it's up to you, but again, if you want to support creating more such content, so just do it out of as a favor. Okay, like like karo sir. Okay, let's let's uh, kind of go through the quiz. 
uh, the quiz will require some part of uh, this right some part of uh, day two but i mean you can still understand the things okay okay this is too large yeah this is i think readable so the first question that we're going to deal with is what is the optimal time conversation to solve the following problem okay and the problem is you have n items each has each with weight wi and a value vi you can carry max w with you your task is to maximize the value of the items you carry okay the total weight that you can carry is less than or equal to w the to your task is to maximize the weight of the items now this is a very very classical problem we have solved more difficult question than this in the video if you have already watched the day 2 one but let me in fact uh, tell you what this is do you know what the name of this problem is i mean some of you might know already yeah this is this is called knapsack problem so there is this famous version that there is this bag okay which contains only w weight and there is items n items each with wi weight and a pi profit right there are n items such thing and uh, how do you fill the bag of w weight so that the total price is this and there are multiple versions to this 0 1 which means you can take one item zero times or one times zero in uh, in uh, zero infinity which means you can take anything from zero to infinity right so uh, but all of them are very very similar over here this is a very very similar setup to form 1 that we have discussed till now so there are like n items right this is wi w1 p1 w2 p2 right and for every item you have two choices to take it into the subset to not take it right in the in the videos you can you could have uh, understood the idea that uh like since the restriction is that less than equal to w weight we have to keep dp of level which is for form 1 uh and the other problem would be other thing would be taken sum we have already seen such thing in the question before taken sum how much sum you have taken so in this case what will happen is this is going to be then there are two transitions so if you remember the formula for time conversion it will be order levels there are n levels n items taken sum is going to be w because you, you have to take less than equal to w weight in total and there are two transitions so number of states which is equal to n into w multiplied by 1 plus number of transitions which is 2 okay and if you plug this in this is going to be o of n into w so this is the time complexity for this clear everyone how are we thinking about it so this is a restriction so we may model that you think about the dp formulation then you think about the time complexity clear uh the mcqs part would be difficult if you have not seen today's videos but again uh after that like the doubts and all will be very very general okay so essentially just a just to quickly very very quickly summarize things because this this part will anyways be, be helpful to everyone to quickly uh, like analyze the things what we have learned let me see if you guys have uh like learned so 1 plus 2 this is a formula so let's quick quick do a quick revision let's see if you guys remember the simple framework so to, today's agenda was to kind of learn a framework and we learned this basic setup that first what is the first step to do in any particular problem what is the first thing that we do no that's about coding no i mean what is the thing that we yeah form what we are deducting is first thing is decide form right decide the form what is the second thing that we do in any particular problem states okay we essentially write dp of dash equal to dash we fill in these values by the constraints by the form first of all which is level over here and by the constraints less than equal to w is modeled using the current sum okay taken and the meaning is same as problem this is what we have learned for now okay what is the third thing that we do then the transitions and this comes from the forms choices itself right take it or not take it and something like this the fourth thing that we have learned today in the videos is for any particular problem the next thing that you should do is tl check or time limit check or complexity uh the way we do this is we find out this number order number of states 
इंटू वन प्लस एवरेज नंबर ऑफ ट्रांजेक्शन इन मोस्ट केसेस दिस इज द थिंग समटाइम्स यू माइट नीड टू कंसिडर कॉस्ट बिकॉज टू डिसाइड टू चेक इफ दिस ट्रांजेक्शन इज पॉसिबल और नॉट मे बी यू हैड यू हैव एन ऑर्डर एंड कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी सो दैट विल बी काउंटेड ओवर हियर ओके एवरेज कॉस्ट ऑफ ट्रांजेक्शन बस बट इन मोस्ट केसेस वी जस्ट चेक अ सिंगल ऑर्डर वन स्टेटमेंट सो दैट इज वाई वी विल कॉल दिस एज ऑर्डर वन एवरेज नंबर and in this case this is the formula we put number of transitions over here as 2 uh this comes from initializing the states takes some time as well so this is and this is uh, in this case comes from the for, uh, from the states so this is going to be n into w into 1 plus 2 in this case which is equal to n into w okay uh the final thing that we should do is coding okay this is the basic framework for any particular problem unless you are sure till this point that things are working now we need to go up, go to uh, coding okay i feel a lot of people code without even understanding ki whether my code is going to be correct or not whereas ideally what you should do is you should like only code things which you are sure about personally i don't think i code something which i code something and it, it doesn't get accepted okay i mean or i might have bugs but i debug them at least the logic is correct to certain sense or i'm on the correct track and maybe at the end i made some mistake okay so that's the thing so this is the basic framework that we learned today and we saw some problems related to that we talked about uh, caching across queries we talked about how to print solutions which are very very interesting ideas right i mean nobody generally talks about these ideas but they are sometimes useful in a different ways in certain problems and nobody will like know that okay this is something to be learned about right so i will cover many many different ideas like this which i feel people only learn through experience by making mistakes and you will now know them beforehand even making the mistake so the first time you will see them in the contest you will be able to solve things okay great so now what we going to do is we going to go back to the mcq questions that we had there is that Too many screens. <laughs> so this one was nothing but n into w. So we do this and we are done with the problem. Okay. Next move to the next problem. There are n items. Okay. There are n items. Each item has a value associated with it. You can carry a max weight of w. You can also take a max of k consecutive items. Okay. There are n items in a in a let's say serial manner. You can take a maximum weight of w. and you can only take a max of k consecutive items okay the summation of weights all the times is in less than equal to w sum okay is in w sum which you are kind of keeping in as in variable you need to maximize the value of items you can carry same as the previous problem but you have this extra restriction now you can only take a maximum of k consecutive items If we formulate it as at as form one dp, what will be the space and time complexity of this problem? Okay, so essentially we need to solve this using form one to certain sense. That's the question. Is the question clear to everyone? The new restriction that we are seeing over here is this. This was already there in the previous problem. You can only take at max k consecutive items over here. Okay. Yeah. Ideally, you should see the videos first. Yes, in that case. so what do we do in this case we have not learned this new constraint so when people say na ki vivek uh, i am not able to solve db new db problems mostly it's issue of maybe experience or maybe how do you how many problems have you seen because the main thing that you pick up from any practice of dp or while solving problems is how do you model restrictions using states or transitions that's what we do so we need to know how we can kind of maintain that i have only taken at max k items at every time that's what we need to maintain the way we will do this is again in form one formulation let's try to see how we we'll do this we have n items okay very very same setup so right now we are at this level and we need to decide can i take this item or not so what are the things that i require number one is obviously the total like w sum that we have taken till now 
ओके हाउ मच वट इज डब्ल्यू सम दैट वी हैव टेकन और वट एवर सॉरी डब्ल्यू नॉट डब्ल्यू सम लाइक द करेंट सम टेकन सम Now what was another thing that was there? How many items have you cannot take more than k items consecutively? The way we handle this in state is we keep track of how many continuous item we have been taking till now. Continuous item taken last till last element. Okay. So if let's say there is this a b c, if I took this took this and I'm I'm at this level, I will say my this value this state is actually equal to two because I have taken last two consecutive values. If let's say it's a b c and I'm dealing with this item d over here. and i have taken this item this item then the value of this particular thing would be zero okay yeah that's correct okay so that's what we keep track of ki how many continuous last few values have i taken because as soon as this becomes k i cannot take the next item na so i have to keep track of how many continuous i have been taking till now so this is the new state idea so what will be my deep so this is my first in understanding like it is form one while formulating state i thought about ki i need to keep track of this i need to keep track of this so i will make dp of level okay next is taken sum how much sum i have taken because i have to restrict it with w and the third thing that i will keep track is last continuous taken how many i am i have been taking till last these three things i will keep track of now uh, to ca calculate the time complexity i can like Well, there are only two transition take or don't take very similar to the last problem this can take n n values taken sum can take how what can it take it can be w sum sum of all items or it can be the given weight minimum of these two things because i can never go beyond the total sum of items or i can never go beyond the total weight maximum weight that is given to you because there is nothing beyond that right there is nothing uh, beyond that that makes sense this is something we have discussed in the video And last continuous taken, this can take. You can take zero, one, two, three, or up till k minus one or k. So this can take k values, k different values, order k different values. In total, the number of states would be order n into k into min of these two things. Right? That that will be the number of states. And transitions is two. So you know that it will get multiplied with one plus two, which is which is anyways like order constant. transitions is if you take it and if you don't take it so let's try to see how we will do this let's say if you are at some let's try to write the transition if you are at level l and you have taken s sum and you have taken c continuous values okay if you take and you don't take there are two different options okay you can go you will go to dp of level plus 1 okay if you take uh the the sum would be sum would increase by w of the level which you took just now because you have not taken that item and the continuous item increases by 1 because you have taken the last item so whatever continuous till last one was there it will increase by 1 plus since you took this item you going to get a plus s of i which is the like profit of i p of i whatever profit of i is and if you don't take it you going to go to dp of level plus 1 obviously you go to the next item if you take if you don't take it my sum doesn't increase so it remains as my continuous sum would become zero why because for if you are over here if you did not take this for the next level there was no continuous element taken for the last item so it will become strict zero over here okay you, in the problem that we discussed in the video we could take at most k items from any place now they are like we cannot take more than k items in continuous so if sometimes we don't take something my things reset and i am now free to take again k and things item so that's how we will formulate the state and this is the whole transition in fact i mean in fact in fact this is the whole solution of this problem that's how is it that's how easy it is actually once you understand how to model problems don't think it's 2d 3d and all because there is this new restriction in the problem we will add a new state in the problem that's it that's how d is increases right we discussed this thing in the last stream right clear everyone that's about this particular problem so we solved almost a new problem in the stream but i think i hope this was interesting right no taken s s plus w level what is this s 
एस ऑफ आई आई डेंट टेक आई डेंट गेट योर क्वेश्चन नंबर टेकन लेट लेट्स गो बैक टू द क्वेश्चन वंस एंड देन गेट द क्वेश्चन नो एस व्हाट इज एस ओवर हियर इज समथिंग मेंटेन ओवर हियर दिस हैज अ वैल्यू सो दिस इज द पीआई बिकॉज the total weight you have that you have taken previously will remain the, the that only right so whatever items you have taken till this much let's say there was sum is this if you don't take it till this much also the sum that you have taken till now is s right but if you take it till this much you had taken s till this you had taken s and now you also take this item so this item has a wi weight so total item would be this plus wi right yeah i'm that is obviously there like i'm not writing the full code so there will be some check over here the check will make sure that this like if my current c is equal to equal to k is not equal to k i have not taken already k items and uh i and s plus w level is less than equal to this these all checks would be there but that's a coding thing right i mean you guys can write checks much more easily than thinking about these states and all clear everyone maybe if time permits i will code this one at the end if you guys are not sure about it clear yeah. but this is like th these kind of questions so are you guys understand like were you guys able to think somewhat on how would this problem be approached when you are after learning the framework okay what is tomorrow's form so we going to learn all the forms tomorrow in fact so the main agenda is that you should be able to think about these structured ways on your own not just me telling you ki this is how we are writing it if you have watched the videos properly and if you have understood them and if you have solved the question then you would be able to do this and i will but i'm getting stuck in coding that will happen guys i mean for the first 3 4 5 problems it's always new right so when you are typing on your own it gets like a bit uh, weird when you are writing it on your own and you are unsure about few things it will come with practice okay great let's go back to the mcqs then now we know the where is the mcqs now we know the time complexity what will be the space complexity space complexity is order s it's the same thing so this one okay next is yeah i will do that don't worry in subset some queries to cache across queries which two states were kept as dp states to best time complexity so should we keep taken or should we take keep left everybody should remember this this is this is there in the videos left right so this was what we kept in the video if you remember now let's this is one of the key learnings for today's video i mean like this is something we'll spend good amount of time on and then i will take all the questions okay so in the video i showed you guys how to print one solution of the problem right how to print a solution but what if you are asked to print all solutions of a of a problem what if you are asked to print all solutions of a problem that is very very difficult no what happens in that case okay so let's get back to a bit of coding to to see things okay how do you print all solutions so you guys have learned how to solve uh how to solve it only for one set but what if we have to print everything it turns out that we will have to do both one and two okay it turns out that we will do both one and two that is i think the correct one but let me explain why this works and why this uh, like doesn't work to certain sense okay so let's say i'm writing this void recurrence or print function and this is the state int state that i'm getting into right so what we will have to do is right this is the thing we will have to keep keep track of a vector of 
So I'm going to write the same code so that we are good to go. This is something from the video itself. I don't have the full code right now, but this is the same thing from the video. So we had this, how, what, what level we are at and integer le left, how much item was left. This was the state that we were at. Okay. If level is equal to equal to n plus one. The out something, something over here. Okay. And then for the two transitions, whichever one is correct, we will go and do that recurrence of level plus one left. If this was if this was giving us a solution, then what we do is we print, we go ahead and go into this direction and print the things. Okay. And else if recurrence of level plus one left, uh, whatever is left to be built. If you, if you take this item, you're going to have to build this much. If it is feasible to build this much, then take. Okay. So in that case, we, we used to print it and then go into print set level plus one left minus x level this is this is what we we used to do but we have to print the number because since we had to go only in one branch uh, earlier we were printing just thing over here but the problem is uh, it doesn't really work this way if you have to print all solutions so note very very carefully how to print all solutions if you have to do it okay so what we do is we keep track of the current or let's say integer vector current solution current solution okay whatever current solution it is so if you this is don't take this is take right so if you take something what we'll do is we'll insert current dot pushback the current item which is x of level and then we will use this new inserted thing into the recursion for the next level okay this is what we'll do over here okay and if you don't take it then you keep pass the same current over here first of all now both the branches is possible so we will have to remove else if this is feasible if you don't take and you get a solution then with the current choices that you have made go into the side which is don't take and print all the solutions that are over there if it is possible to build the solution with taking the uh, taking the element then take the element into the current set and print whatever is possible from the rest okay and when you reach the final thing over here what we can do is we can print the like the current set whichever we have reached with at this point and that will give you the like obviously like we cannot print, print like we can do go ahead and auto v incur c out v c out and l and return so whatever set we reach over whatever vector we reach over here with is actually a solution think about this you started with an empty vector every time you found out that this direction has a solution go into that direction and explore it and meanwhile whichever items were being taken to go into that branch depending upon the transition you take it inside the curve so the, by the time you reach the base level you're gonna have the curve containing everything that is there okay now one more thing that we can do is we can also pass this by reference so that when you push this and then you pa pass it into the print set it doesn't really copy the vector this is actually not the best complexity because it will copy the vector into the new call and it will be order and added extra if you pass by reference then this is also good but in that case we will have to do this as well so this is the same thing if you remember this is actually exactly same as the backtracking code that we had learned in the first class base case the two choices that we have go into the recursion this is this is nothing but uh, change the structure make the move revert back remember guys this is exactly this the code that i've written right now is nothing but recursion or backtracking to print the solutions with the dp right but we are only going into those branches which actually have a solution that's how you can print all solutions as well if you have to do it clear everyone so this is actually a backtracking code which prints all solution okay by the way for a particular problem the number of solutions can be exponential for this problem so anyways this will go exponential complexity if you have to print everything okay so having an ampersand here or not will not matter much because you already have an exponential factor to it 
बट या प्रिंटिंग ऑसोलेशन जनरली लाइक एक्सपोनेंशियल इन नेचर फॉर सच फॉर्मर प्रॉब्लम एटलीस्ट तो वी जस्ट लर्न हाउ टू राइट बैक ट्रैकिंग ऑन टॉप ऑफ अ डीपी टू प्रिंट इट सोल्यूशन विच इज प्रेटी नाइस राइट so we have been doing quite interesting stuff for at least the first two days so i think we need both one and two which makes sense right so that will be there so this is the link you guys can revise it up if you want from over here i'm going to pin it up in the chat just so that if you want you can go through this mcqs later on again as well okay clear everyone okay i'm confused in time complexity the time complexity is going to be exponential because this is uh, the same thing as a backtracking code the code that i wrote it is nothing different than the backtracking okay so that is what we have over here it's a backtracking code try to see it why it's good. so think about every element being one and the sum being uh, and then sum being n by 2 so you can choose any 2 n by 2 over here like many sums can be created by the same way right so that's the thing No, no. The print set, the print set code that I wrote, we didn't add a memoization over there, so it's not a DP code. The actual DP code that we wrote, the recurrence is actually a DP code. So all those calls are now order one, and we can treat it like a DP. But the print set code that I wrote, it never memoizes the state, and we cannot because the vector is there. There is a vector which is kind of being there, right? Very similar to this. So that's why we never added this one. Great. Now let's go back then. Now let's go to the time complexity stuff that we have been talking about for some time now. Okay. Print set is not feasible. It's exponential. So it, in true sense, you will only be asked in a test or in a near real setup about printing one solution. for time complexity you can multiply all states if it is dp yes if the if the function is being memoized then you can multiply the states and multiply it with the number of transitions average number of transitions per state okay so let's go to the videos now and now we will take the doubts that you guys have posted on to the youtube things okay <laughs> no no so we cannot use dp array again instead of rec right no uh, that's a very good question i think we have that in one of the comments and i think even laksh answered that very very well okay I'm going to take that question don't worry that's what you're talking about right priyansh i have seen your comment i mean guys i think most of you would know that if you guys would be would, would have been seeing my channel at least i see every comment that is for sure true so i'm going to go through those videos real quick let me open up the channel see this so i'm going to go through first second third open them up pause the video because watching yourself is very very weird stuff <laughs> i mean for you guys seeing the video is fine but when i see myself and hear myself again that is very very weird i mean though i have not got habituated to that try try it some day that you record yourself and then watch and hear yourself speaking about things it, sometimes you feel weird okay great mm hmm where is the comments guys So people have changed a lot of UIs here and there. Okay, yeah. So first of all, uh, big kudos to people who actually like understood the problem with the code. I had mistyped min in instead of max in the code. So if you have been paying attention, if you have been listening carefully, you would have noticed that. But I I hope for anybody who is uh, like already clear about stuff, you guys can do this. Okay, figure out this. uh yeah so mistake is already corrected when you code in sublime screen time takes significant space of the screen you can minimize that sip yes 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 i will i will do that next time so by default it doesn't really has any significance it's in fact it's not even the run time it's actually the compile time of the code so it doesn't really make any sense when you submit on the platform or any platform it is the run time there are two times one is compile time one is run time there is a compile time limit as well because you cannot keep time to the power like thousands of lines of code and submit it on any platform right there is a compile time limit as well in general but we don't really really get a problem with that okay so if you minimize the size uh, yeah i will do that 
yeah this is correct i mean if you do the min you will get the min that's that's there now we do practice problems after this don't worry okay suggestion yes we will do we will do all the questions don't worry present present nice the people do support me by like so this is what i really like even if you don't really have much to say if you just comment one thing i really like like that because that helps me a lot to reach out to more people that's how youtube works guys <laughs> maybe i will take some day uh, a session on how does like let's say youtube and linkedin stuff works like reach and stuff works at least what i have figured out by reading things because when you are a content creator you do read about these things right ki how your your content can reach to more people like in linkedin there are certain rules that you can follow which makes makes your post reach more people yes that's correct could you please dig a bit in the time constraint of query part of the question can you assume the recursion calls over all queries yes so could you please dig a bit deeper into the final time constraint of the query question part so the dp will remain the same okay dp will uh, the dp complexity will remain the same uh, how we can assume the recursion calls over all queries to be order one i mentioned it in briefly in the video the way we are doing it now is the whole computation of dp is going to take that complexity the t the time limit that i wrote in as a formula number of states multiplied by 1 plus number of transitions this is the total time it takes to compute all the states so irrespective of which order they happen what we do is we assume that it has happened and this is the total time that it will take we know we add it to the total time complexity and now everything will behave as if we are just accessing it like a cache okay so that's the main thing so always do this thing in in your codes that when you are analyzing thing na if you have written the dp and you have refreshed the dp array and you are using the dp array simply add the total complexity cost because i don't know how is going to compute so everything is going to get computed on the worst case so add the time complexity number 1 plus now every recursion call that happens anywhere in the code is going to be equal to an order one call because now you have it saved in the dp array so that's how it's, it's going to be calculated okay so i'll get to million soon <laughs> hope some day education channels don't really get that fast for me that's not possible how can we assume that recursion calls so that is what the answer for this the return value is minus 1 we can create another 2d boolean array that tells us which states has been computed or which states have not been uh yeah we can do this this is actually a correct very very correct observation uh, everybody can read this everybody has read this thing everybody has read this statement i'm going to make a very very interesting point right now can i have a quick yes if everybody has, like i just want your attention that's why can i have a quick plus yes that if you have read this statement a very very interesting observation okay some problems might have their return value as negatives also okay which means maybe the skill points are in positive negative as well and you have to take at least k items so you can get a total negative as well okay in that case you cannot set the dp value array to minus 1 as a default value because that can be a true value as well right maybe what happens if if that is the true value and you are returning you are computing and it it's getting value of minus 1 so you it will behave as if it is not computed so in those cases you can keep a separate ar boolean array to keep the information that whether this state has been calculated or not but it's only for those cases okay this is another interesting learning i will i will definitely put up an example in one of the days so that you can kind of realize why is this being important right we'll take up this one in one of the videos clear everyone but just to kind of quickly cover this one if minus 1 is a potential value of return value of a recurrence then we cannot use minus 1 as a default value of dp we we do this memset minus 1 right yeah that is the that is the thing so we have to we can keep a number which can't be reached that is true but me what if everybody everything can be reached just as a concept i'm saying okay that is true we can set anything that is not reachable not possible to reach yeah that is that is what we can do in competitive setups sometimes but what if there in conceptual sense what can we do that is going to be correct at all the times okay can comment on videos ye kaise ho gaya is a very very good comment okay okay i like second query problem i think the idea is somewhat similar to at codel e uh 
E is a different question. It is a state rotation idea. The problem of ad coder E is a state rotation idea. We'll talk about ad coder problems. Like you guys would be able to solve the ad coder questions that we are taking that after this workshop, like a piece of cake. Okay. The at least the questions that that we are using form one to five. Uh, yeah, I I wrote this as a mistake. I think I have corrected that in the second part, in the last part of the video. So don't worry about that. Okay. In the base case, what if we level reaches to n target sum in left is becomes or sum left becomes zero? Yeah, this is actually a very very interesting point. Is everybody read? Has everybody read this comment quickly? Oh, sorry. I think I should be doing this. I must click that. Don't worry. Everybody has read this comment. What if we reach before n a sum value of zero? So we know that we have created the set, so we can maybe potentially return one as well, right? Everybody has read this quick plus one because I'm going to make a very interesting statement now. Try to do this. as a pruning statement if you want to do it okay it's perfectly fine but understand that in those cases you will not have your dp values initialized in the rest of the states which might be relevant for some other dp okay so overall it will be filled for sure so your time complexity saving is not going to happen number 1 number 2 refrain from doing this in printing problems because not all dp states will be populated properly in case it happens for multiple different queries or so okay so don't try to do this if it is not required but it can be added as a pruning in the statement just to make the code a bit faster though i personally say that you don't really need to do these optimizations in dp problems because everything is reachable right by some some way also how it helps with queries so essentially like maybe what happens is it like if there is in certain query if you if you could take only these two items in the next query if you took these two items maybe so in one query it was possible to take these two items in another query it was possible to take these two items so in that case the result for only this item would be already saved in this query and then it will be reused over here so the dp array will be fished pushed only once okay yeah yeah don't worry i mean we'll we'll have more problems on the platform i mean we are just learning the basic things right so i have not added many problems so that i don't want you to get intimidated by the number of problems i can throw in many many problems and you will there is enough problems there but for now let's keep it up this way yes that's that's the correct idea i mean that's the correct idea chalo this is the second video let's go to the third video i'm stuck with 1900 dp problems does this happen do the workshop i think you will get good idea i mean we're going to learn a many concepts over here but for printing the subset we can use vector and pushback and then when taking and pop back while crack back turning right this is this is for brute forcing all the solutions yeah we cannot memoize vectors that is correct perfect logic prions this is actually correct this is the same as the print set question that we in the n queen problem we cannot save vectors because that is not going to give us any efficiency at all if you are saving things you might as well do a brute force because we are saving every information every bit of information there is we are not reducing the information to a smaller number right yeah yeah we will do this i mean i'm going to give you, i'm going to make you guys expert in dp wo oh, aapko nahi sochna hai that's my work okay i'm going to make sure that you guys learn dp just make sure that you watch the content properly okay this is the first, so that's why i thought because i was always feeling this like uh, problem in explaining problems on youtube because i had not taught you guys forms and how can i explain a problem which needs some form right so that's why i thought about making this workshop this is the first time db problems need printing are right? hello that's there i will show printer function we have already discussed this it will be exponential okay yeah we will do this don't worry This form of DP session I don't know. Maximum or sum provided by k operation doubling any events k equal to eleven. Yeah, so this is a this is also DP. You can use this use DP form one problem two. But for just today, I'm not taking new problems. I will take the problems that are there in the platform first, and then we will do it. Okay. Level comma k. Uh, no, you will have to keep a mask somehow maybe. 
you will have to keep a mask of how what is the mask of the current items that you are keeping and a k as well that how many k have you used yet so you will have to keep what all possible things you have taken what is the mask you have taken in the state itself somehow maybe that is one option we'll see yeah so there was this thing right we can replace recurrence with dpra we can do this in this code but uh, not always i think lakshya has answered this perfectly over here this is the perfect reply to this question this particular question i don't need to even explain anything so lakshya has like in fact helped me structure some content on this dp workshop as well like i have taught him before so uh, he had helped me in making a lot of this content on dp and uh, like the answer that is written is perfect the reason being is if you ever need any value from the recurrence any value of dp always call recurrence never use the dp array remember this if you ever need any value always use recurrence never use dp array there are three problems to that number one what if it's not filled you have a by default minus one because it was not accessed by any of the recurrence calls okay that you had done earlier number two what if it's a base case okay what if it's a base case because we don't populate the base case parameters in in the array we just return it there and there so the base case are not present in the dp array it's not present in the dp array but it's it will be returned correctly if you call the recurrence okay so that's why don't call the dp array the third reason for this would be that the order like when you are writing or right a or b as lakshya has perfectly explained in the problem if this evaluates to true this will not be executed so but you if you are printing all solutions you want to explore this option and this option as well right so it will not get pop the dp for this particular part will not get populated and if you are printing all solutions it might get wrong answers as well so always use recurrence function to get the dp value never use the dp array directly if you are writing this way of the code is this correct everybody will remember this well like that's not true you will not be able to it's not possible it's it's not it's not true that you cannot learn on 7 days but i mean if you put in 4 5 hours i think it's possible to a very very good extent but it requires some base i understand that that if you already know some things that helps yeah that is true that is true that is correct for this case it works i'm saying this is a general rule yeah this is all sets are populated but in this case i'm just talking about a general rule why we should not do it in general okay tomorrow how many videos i think four videos will be there but smaller ones okay let's go back thank you bhaiya maine ek din please yeah you can you can keep you can comment on the videos that were there in that day because i will check those questions i will take those questions too don't worry okay let's go to now the problems that are there on the platform to quickly discuss them yes yes uh, if 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 i am taking i if i am taking a problem then most probably you will get discussion for sure like i don't i don't think i teach without examples so i will take problem discussions only in the question even if if the even if the video is short if you have seen my channel mostly i take questions itself because i feel examples can be learned in this way subset some queries so which one do we need to take out of this how many of you were able to solve all the problems the, like knapsack and subset some queries is the video problem itself i think these are the two new problems that is given so i will take these two questions first and then we will do the rest because these two i think is covered in the video itself right to certain sense bricks problem there is n line in a brick m different colors colored buckets of paints you have to find the number of ways you can color the brick wall such that there is exactly k positions out of the n bricks such that it's a different color from the brick on the immediate left okay and the fourth problem is 
if you clean a particular window it is it is going to get flowed down to the next levels three values then it's going to flow down to the next levels this value and so on Okay, so let's. So these are two problems. I'm gonna go through the problems one by one. Let's take this question first. Okay. Uh, in the third question, is it such that the one bucket of paint can paint a single wall? No, no, no. It can paint any number of walls. There are m different colors. N n bricks n different colors. You have to make sure that exactly k positions out of the n bricks. Is that they have a different color? So there are n walls, okay, and you have m colors. You have to make sure that there are k positions such that this differs the from color of this. So there are two ways in which you can do this. Yeah, you can keep track of this. So what we'll do is that when you are doing this, you will start with DP. Which one you are coloring right now? Level that you are coloring right now. Uh, to decide whether this is, if you are coloring this, to decide whether it's different from the previous or one or not, you can keep keep track of previous color. That what was the previous color, right? You have to keep track of previous color and how many of the breakpoints. Like you have to make sure that there are key breakpoints, right? There are key exact places where the wall differs from its left one so how many are break points i'm just gonna just add over here okay which level you are at what was the previous color what is the how many break points have you placed now there are two options over here right in fact there are actually m options over here but i can i, I can go ahead and do this think about this okay let's say color one color two color three and this was color two okay and let's say there is a color four as well. Let's think it this way. So there are M options over here to color. To color this cell, you can do it in M ways, right? Color, you can put color one, color two, color three. And let's say for an example, this is state two, uh, which means the previous state has previous wall has a colored N. So it's like there is this wall, right? There is this. If you un un not understood the problem, there is this N wall, N length wall, one, two, three, four up till N. And you have to paint them with M colors, infinite M colors are there, infinite supply of M different colors are there, such that exactly two different, uh, exactly K different walls are different. So if I say K equal to two, this is because color one, color two, color three, this is valid because this has a different color than this, this has a different color than this. Okay. That's the question. So read it once more if you have not understood the problem, but I will quickly go ahead and explain the solution idea. So over here, NM is up to 2000. Okay. NM is up to 2000. K is up till this. And sum of N, K over all. Okay. So the, the videos, the images are not loading up. I think that's some issue. My end maybe. You have to point it with the modulo this. The number of test cases are there that like we have to obviously so this is a problem where you need to cache it across the test cases because given n m k it's a different thing right so time on your print set 2 to the power n uh, over here so print set in the default case was order n just the number of states which will flow only once in the other one first this let's go fo let's focus on this problem n m is this and then uh, this is there how do we model this one hmm it's a good question let's see so we right now have level previous color and breakpoint and we have these options so what we can do is we can maybe put so this is we are modeling it in form one 
that's how we are doing it there is n walls m colors and this is there and what we need to do is we need to keep track of this particular thing over here and one is so over here if you choose the color one let's say the last color was so think it this way i had made this paint two i had made this paint three and now i'm painting this one this is my current level this is my current configuration so over here if i paint one i will reach dp of level plus one comma one comma the breakpoint since the previous color was two and my color current color is one my breakpoint is going to increase by one so b plus one okay i'm going to reach this configuration dp of 2 it's same as the last color so level plus 1 comma 2 and since the it's same we don't increase the breakpoint in this case we're going to reach dp of level plus 1 we're going to reach 3 and over here the breakpoint is going to increase and so on right this is all going to be the similar thing so as you can see the behavior for being same and so this is one possible modeling right this is one possible model yeah that is correct that is the correct base case so this is one possible modeling though it will be very high in complexity this will be n possible colors previous color m possible color breakpoints k possibilities number of transitions m transitions so the if you put in the formula it will be n into m into k into 1 plus m that's the total complexity will be there which is equal to order n m square k which is very very high okay in this problem we are given n m k all in the range of 2000s right so we need to somehow reduce this thing so the way we will deal deal with this is we're gonna try to drop this previous colors can we somehow drop this state does this state even make sense because for all the rest it's gonna behave same the b plus one just depends upon whether it's same or not so the way we're gonna write the dp is a bit different we will try to reformulate the dp a bit okay and we will say level previous color uh we can try and keep it there but we can as well drop it let's say this let's let's try to write a different meaning so this is where smart formulation of dp comes into action that what we will do is we will keep just breakpoints the number of breakpoints you have put yet okay Now from over here, so what this is, what this means is you are at this level, okay, and you have placed some number of breakpoints, okay, some number of breakpoints. We don't even need a flag also, okay. Now from over here, we will keep two, only two transitions. Whatever I have done over here, use the same color over here or a different color. So the transition will be same as last or different, okay. If I use same as last, how many choices of colors do I have? If I use the same color as the last, what are, how many different colors can I put over here? How many different colors? One, right? If it's same as last, if I put two, three over here, how many different options do I have if I same place is same as last? Only one. You have to put two only, right? then only it will be same as last. So it will be 1 into 1 options for color multiplied by dp of level comma level plus 1 and breakpoint doesn't increase okay if it is different how many options do i have i have exactly m minus 1 different options because the everything anything other than the same in that case i'm going to reach m minus 1 different choices for each of them for each of those colors i'm i'm actually like kind of collapsing all the transitions because all of them will lead to the same state now dp of level plus one and the number of breakpoint is going to increase plus one that's the state that we will reach yes that's the correct that's the correct that's the correct way to think mr right so this is how we can do it so on the first thought when you think about this problem you just see this way that I formulated that this is something you should be able to do when you are looking at these problems that form one. So I will write, draw this diagram, put an arrow at a place and think about, okay, what can I do in this particular? So try to understand how the mental model works. I, I think about form one. So I draw this diagram. I think, okay, what will be my choices for this? I need to know 
so first of all i need to keep track of exact key breakpoints so i will put that so that is a restriction put that in the state okay now to decide this what is the color over here and how many breakpoints how does breakpoint change maybe the previous color is something i need to keep track of because then only i will know na, whether it's same or not so previous color i keep track in state and i design a transition over here but then i realize like okay why do i need a previous color maybe i can design it some other way too maybe i can keep my dp very very optimal i can keep just level and breakpoint okay and i don't i don't need to know like to find out the ways i don't need to know what was the last color it has to be just either same or different right breakpoint to decide if there is a breakpoint over here yes or no it is either going to be same as the last or different from the last so the transitions is what i will keep over here same or different okay and i will only maintain breakpoint that is how i will reduce my time complexity and then i will like explain and then i will keep it better. then the complexity will come out to be order n into k because there are two transitions and level is n breakpoint is k so n into k would be the total time complexity and in the problem you can see that like uh, first of all we will we can cache it across arrays number one okay oh there is one one more one more beautiful thing in this problem one more beautiful thing in this problem think about it i think most of you would not be still able to solve this problem i want you guys to try this up i want you to try this up i have given you the idea it is n into k and it is given that the n into k over all test cases does not exceed 4 into 20 power 8 and there is a 5 second time limit so 1 second uh, 1 second can uh, hold 10 to the power 8 so 5 seconds can hold 5 to the power 8 okay so sum up so we check the n into k summed across all test cases and it is given that it is it doesn't exceed 4 into 20 power 8 okay but there is one still small caveat that i want you guys to understand i want you to try about it it's not about the modulo stuff it's more about caching across the states and in this problem n m k all are changing across the states okay n m m so how do you do this in that case okay so try to think about this this is a dp solution for this one but across states so the question is across states can we opt can we kind of do the solution so this is an iterative code i'll show you this yeah it's a bit complicated but i mean we can because if you use n into k we don't need to so if you try to cache it across the test cases then it like you will have to keep the m in the state as well but that is not passing so we will not cache it across test cases and just run it the normal way the normal dp way okay so every test case will run in order n into k n into k for that test case and it is given that sum of n into k for all across all test cases is 4e18 48 so it will pass okay so just write the normal dp and it will work so this is a this is a fairly tough problem this is a fairly tough problem but again 16 1700 only not more than that yeah it's so that's that's a very good good point it's not order n into k into t it's sub order of summation of nk across test cases if this, this is a very good good point had this last line not been written in the problem had this last line over here it is guaranteed that sum of nk over all test cases does not exceed this if this line would have not been written it would have been n into k into t but since this line is written it is going to be this which this value is up till 1e, 4e, 8 and not n into k into t. Okay. We'll do it 1 and then multiply it with m. Yeah, so no, 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 you will use the same transition. Try to see, try to do this. Like if n, m, k changes, then the transition changes. Now over here, there is a, in the transition itself, there is m minus 1 multiplied by things. So you cannot really cache it across test cases because M is coming in the transition. As I said in the video, if something 
that is in the input that changes across test cases and you have that in the code then you cannot cache it across dp that's the key learning if you have something as an input in the in every test case that is changing and if you have that in the code of the recurrence which is over here in the transition then you cannot cache it across dp or else you can is that clear clear everyone okay let's go to the last problem i understand that like the obviously some problems would be difficult guys i am like giving some easy problems as well some difficult problems as well so that you learn something new hmm what is this given input the first one contains t test cases in nm the size of the building and then ai which window is cleaned the time at which the ith window is cleaned at at a time only one window will be cleaned so it is three test cases uh there is two cross two sorry size of the building okay for each row Four comma four. What is four comma three over exactly? Oh, these are the values of the cells. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So how do we do this? but how can we do this particular thing so if you clean something twice it becomes dirty so if you do something twice it flips its back to zero what kind of property does this seem like zor yeah that's 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 a good idea maybe zoring things can be something which might be helpful okay not up not not really not up right like zoring things might be helpful okay that's the first idea let's go back to the problem uh so n and m are pretty large and we need to process them we need to process them from the like lowest to largest so how do we process it up anybody who has solved this problem this was this was a fairly good, tough problem like these are challenger problems to a certain sense how do you do this nobody solved this one nice what it solved the editorial is available on this one i think i was thinking to explain this one but i feel 
most of you have not attempted this problem and maybe some of you are pretty new so i can go ahead and explain this problem but it doesn't make sense much more now because the tutorial is present i think for those who have not been able to solve it up they would see the tutorial and understand the idea actually there has to be a certain way in which process the idea okay but yeah uh, okay this problem we will skip it for today i'm going to show you guys something i'm going to teach you guys something in the future days and we will be able to we will be able to go back about this particular problem every day will contain like some like easy questions then medium question then hard question don't worry about that and then post that we are going to be doing this yeah observation is, that is uh, yeah this is this is an observation based question as well like this is a diff2 kind of question in certain sense if you go into tutorial you will see the main idea about this one there is this yeah just start from the window that is cleaned at last that is the idea and then propagate it downwards to certain sense and let it let the lower values handle it up so it's a the order in which you process the things matter and that too is fairly fairly difficult to certain sense okay to understand so i will do this one once we learn a bit of iterative coding okay this actually needs a bit of iterative coding not not very high but i mean is a very basic conversion from dp to iterative coding this contains a small idea about that so that's why i'm going to skip it for today but again if you want you can try it up internet tutorial is always there and like as i always guaranteed that there should be something for everyone if you could solve the understood the video and could have solved the first two problems that is more than enough for today okay and we will do more and more problems going down the lines and once we unlock tomorrow's video there will be many problems for today i just wanted to give a basic problem that will be there the question is essentially that first this will get uh, so this all of these are initially zero now first what will happen is that uh, for this this will get one but then at time two this will get one at time three this will get one but uh, it will it, it will change the things below it so let me go ahead and show you the in the input so for window i water flows to window i plus 1 i minus 1 sorry i plus 1 j minus 1 i plus 1 uh, j i plus 1 j plus 1 so which is like in the next row uh, the all the three columns if it exists right so when this is cleaned when this is cleaned it is going to make this this dirty okay when this is cleaned it is going to make this this and dirty so when you process the largest value okay everything below it is going to become dirty at the end because this is going to get corrected and everything else is going to become dirty then you process the next smaller value and then the next smaller value and so on that is how you can process the values because it's like if something is processed now and if it was not already dirty maybe then everything below it is going to remain dirty forever that's the main idea about dp and you have to propagate that value downwards so that's that's where a bit of iterative coding comes into picture it's like sort the values in their order when you keep this just call a function that mark everything in its like di diamond shape inside it dirty then go to the next value if it is still not marked mark that cell as clean and everything inside it as dirty if you keep doing it recursively and you stop at the places where it is marked dirty it will be actually a order in, in into mdp and it will be solved in the given time limit so that's what how the idea is the main idea is sort the things by their value okay and for go one by one from the largest to the smallest the largest will be cleaned at the last so it will be clean for sure and everything inside its subtree would be remain would remain dirty then go to the next value see if it is not yet marked it mark it as clean and everything inside it as dirty go to the next value it is marked dirty so don't do anything because anyways it's going to be get dirty and if something gets cleaned and something above it gets cleaned it's going to cover everything inside it as well right so everything will become dirty so that's the main idea of this particular problem uh, going forward we'll solve many such ideas but try to learn the ideas from the tutorials too there's going to be a lot of things in the as, as in learning but yeah these things do happen as we go forward right so tomorrow tomorrow you're going to learn a lot of new problems i think fairly like five six problems in the videos and good amount of question as practice as well so that is going to be quite good so do kind of watch that out and if you have not liked the stream yet like and subscribe to the channel and i think we will meet now in the next video right so that will be all from my side tonight thanks for joining guys i think we are already past 12 i try to keep it at 1 hour mark but
I'm not getting the answer of the problem of the first problem of day two part one. Okay, so that is the same problem as day one last three question, right? That is the main thing. Uh, day two one would be so go through the structure of the backtracking first, and then maybe you can go into that particular problem. What exact part is not clear, Rishi? Uh, what is the difference between is it two zero one prime batch and summit batch? It's the time when it starts. When can you discuss max more problem? Max is that after all problems are discussed? Yeah, so we will keep some sessions later on. Like not, I'm, I don't want to take like non-structural uh, DP questions for now in the workshop six days. Maybe at the end of this, I will take more sessions, more live streams, and just maybe clear up any doubts that you guys have. Okay. Yeah, I will take that post the six days most probably. Like I will have time right after that. So I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. I'm there to teach you guys more. Don't worry. Tomorrow keep a lot of problems. Yes, yes, we will do that. I'll do that. Don't worry. Chalo, I think that will be all for everyone. Thank you and thanks for joining in. Good night. See you all tomorrow. Yeah, I will try the backtracking code first. Yes, that's it. Vivek Opie in the chat. So I should do this gamer stuff, right? Vivek Opie in the chat, right? Maybe maybe someday like once you guys complete the workshop right maybe we will play some online game as well just as a chill stream okay since you guys have worked so hard maybe I will get maybe create a meet send you guys for those who are online who know that I stream and come to the streams daily maybe we will interact on meet and then play some game okay ऐसी कुछ game खेलेंगे online just as an interaction तब कुछ तब भी कोई question हो तो पूछ लेना sir in general I'm more than happy to answer those questions as well okay Thanks for joining in guys. Bye bye. See you all in the next stream. Please four chase with top three player of the world. Maybe someday. Yeah, two. Chalo, good night. Thanks for joining in. Bye bye.